like every game system pretty much ever created, uh, Space Hopper is no, exa uh, no exception. They created a number of modules or ready-to-run adventures, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, this particular one is called Rolson 2. Now, there's some differences, obviously, between these and those of other other game systems. One of the ones that stand out to me, you know, a couple things or issues that stand out. These are older, older systems. So a lot of this, they lack a lot of that smooth edge that we see in more modern stuff because these people were just learning how to create material. They weren't concerned with the readability or the fluff as much as they were about getting you the information they felt you needed to have to play the game. Uh, this particular one was copyrighted in 1982 by Mr. Campbell and published by FGU. The goes straight into the stats. There's the it doesn't set you up very well, I don't think, for what's supposed to happen, what's the plan. And it's the information is available, it's in there, but it's not necessarily in the order that one would prefer to have it in. And that causes the the star the, the game the game master, the star master, however you want to play it, uh, to have to really read and absorb the material to make sure we understand what's going on here. Because we go straight into, like I said, uh, here's the bio for the system and the, the Rishi humanoids, which are uh, based off of fro uh, frog-based uh, genus and their planetary uh, system information, uh, their basic information on the planet, then the gov their government, their state operations. It's a, some sort of communistic society, so there's a lot of that kind of bent to it. I read, I read something the other day on the on uh, the internet about a different game system, and it, it talked about that some game systems, because of the, the the timeline of the real world stuff when they were created, that more that younger audiences today would have a much harder time playing those game systems because they don't have the they can't relate they don't have that that neo political neo religion issues that were prevalent during the time of the creation of the game. So they didn't grow up with it, they don't have as much connection to it, and they have a much harder time playing a game, that particular game because they just don't understand the nuances to it, which I think I'm going to do a blog on that today. The uh, So, in a nutshell, what your your characters are, members of a, of a uh, merchant, uh, merchant uh, starship that's set in here to do some business. Uh, the captain's got some side business going on, so he taps the characters to go deliver a cargo, and in exchange, for any to successful exchange of delivering this cargo, they're going to earn 50,000 50, credits to be split among them. And it sounds pretty straightforward and pretty simple, and, and it is. And you got you're given a handful of weapons, and, and it's, it's made it clear that the, that the locals, while they're you know if they get caught with the weapons, could be in a problem. The weapons do the or the the locals do do uh, uh, random checks, and they have security checkpoints and things like that. But they also tend to be respectful of these aliens from off world, uh, especially the merchants, because uh, they don't want to rock the boat with their superiors, so to speak. So you really have to put your neck out there or do something foolish to get attention brought to yourself. Basically, the ship sends a shuttle down. The crew, the PCs are told, rent a truck, be at a warehouse, and exchange a, a, an envelope. Then go and deliver the cargo. Get another envelope. Everything's supposed to be pretty smooth. And it's set up that way. There, there's the, Actually, the encounters and stuff are very mild in the first part of the book. It's when we get to six, successful delivery, the delivery successfully made. Uh, there might be a few dramatic points and a few accidents to worry about, that kind of stuff. Not a big deal. Where everything falls apart is after this. And it falls apart in an unusual way, which makes this a, 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 a different kind of adventure model, which is nothing wrong with it. Apparently, the planet is notorious for uh, having meteor displays and the occasional... Uh, planetary hit. Well, the, the, the player characters discover on their way back, they get hit by a major meteor storm. The planet gets hit by a major meteor storm. You know, right, right here. And 
this is to give us a map. This is the map of the main island where they're operating on prior to the meteor hit. This is what it looks like a few hours after the meteor hit. And everything that can go wrong goes wrong. You've got you know, a number of strikes that, that do a lot of damage, sends mud, uh, mud and rain and other stuff into the air. More of them hit out to sea, which caused these huge tsunamis to, to pretty much inundate every, all the low end areas. Most of the major, uh, uh, urban centers, including the one that with a spaceport or <laughs> destroyed or under submerged and their shuttles wiped out. These people find themselves at the far end of the island, not far from where this commune was, where they delivered their goods. Their trucks damaged, uh, some equipment is salvageable, but it's specific that the vehicle itself is, is totaled. And that is now their job is they've got X amount of time to figure out how to get back because the ship's captain is going to leave with them, with or without him. He's on a tight schedule. He made that clear to him. You know, you know even though they're going to be obvious from orbit what happened down here, uh, the, it's, the, the player characters have to deal with a whole slew of problems mostly generating from those that post-apocalyptic scenario. How do they how do they survive long enough to find a transport? How do they find a transport? How do they get back to their ship? That being said, that's pretty much the gist of the of the module. It's probably fifteen or so pages. It's not huge. You've got a nice selection of of stuff that gives you some random encounters, random bad encounters, talks about communities, what's left of the government, uh, what they're trying, their response, and what they're trying to do, with, which is overwhelmed by, the, by the, the, the major problems. A lot of the beasties that are now terrified and running through the wilderness and into what's left of the urban communities. So you've got pretty much a mess and your job is to try to get through it, get out of it, get back to your ship. Rowanson 2, a very different kind of module.